How you doing out there, folks? This is the Invisible Man versus Merrick Bank and the Robot, Part 13. Well, this is... I've done this 13 times now, so far. And I don't know how many of these videos you've seen. So in case this is the first time, I'm going to let you know. It's about harassing phone calls from Merrick Bank because that's the the bank that was calling me a lot right now it's quiet in here and that's the way I like it so we'll go back into let's see we'll go back to 2018 how this all got started Marie and I have been together for over 40 years we combined our incomes and I paid the bills so for the last eight years I've been paying our bills on time and our credit was about the same. You know, our credit scores. Marie's was a little bit better. I had a little bit more credit than her, but I was trying to pay hers down. You know, I figured eventually, you know. And the credit scores, the only reason I knew about our credit scores, I didn't look it up. We each had an account with this bank. I think it was a Visa. And every month, they would give you the credit score. So I, I could tell our credit scores were close, but they weren't that great. But they were they were staying in there, you know. I know why, because I own too many accounts and not much available credit. But now, Marie's was a little bit better. So then we have this Mary Bank sends her an offer. Of course, when she saw it, she didn't realize it at the time because she wasn't too. No, her lack of interest, like I keep saying, was an all-time low then. And so was mine, too. Nothing much was going on. So when this came, it's, you know, some excitement. So she opened it up. She looked at it. Oh, Frankie, Frankie. I said, what is it, Marie? She said, oh, Merrick Bank. I don't even know who they are, but I don't care. She said they were going to give me $600 credit. I said, oh, that sounds good. It'd be nice. And then... She said, read it and all, and I told her about this double the credit line. Got to make seven payments on time, and then they're going to give you another 600 Oh, she was so excited. She thought that if we made another seven payments, we would get another 600 I said, no, it didn't work that way. Of course, it was wishful thinking on her part. It's not a bad idea. Because they have all these offers for a reason. And you know yourself, if we end up getting $1,200... I guess in, yeah, in seven months. I mean, they give other offers. They probably give different people different amounts, you know. That may go from 600 to 1,000 to I don't know what. It could be. They could take that 1,200 divided in three payments. You know, three credit levels. Pay seven payments and then go up to eight. Another seven payments and then go up to 12. So they would get 14 payments with their interest on that money and all. And that means chances are nobody's going to be late during that time period. Maybe they don't want they want you to be late. I don't know. That'd be a good way for them to stop some of the the calls too, because if you're paying seven times two is fourteen. That's fourteen payments over a year. That all those accounts, they're not going to be on the late list. So that would cut it down, you know. But I guess they don't look at it that way. I'm looking at it from of those calls because of those calls you know because there's laws for it to protect us from them calls harassing phone calls but it doesn't spell it out to say well creditor or debt collector can't call you more than two times a day or once every seven days no, none of that that's not in there i guess it would be hard to to do that you know to make it apply so they're allowed to call you between 8 a.m and 9 p.m local time whatever your, your time zone is and that's what they do so they but it, they still are not supposed to harass you that's the whole thing about this what I've been doing I know a lot of people may not be aware of it that's what I'm doing this for to make awareness you know now if somebody has to see this video and maybe get something out of it you know Maybe they say, oh, this guy, 
I know all that. He don't have to tell me this. Or, well, you don't have to. You don't have to view this video. It's up to you. You don't have to. If you don't want to, don't. You know, I'm putting information out there. The reason I'm doing it is I'm putting it on YouTube and Twitter. I know YouTube, it stays on there. Someone might not see it today. They might see it next week, next month. But the information I'm giving is still out there. You know, I looked it up. There's plenty of information on harassing phone calls. I think mine's a little more thorough. A lot of it is not 20 minutes, 10 minutes, maybe half an hour. Not too much like mine. You know, mine's a little bit longer because I'm going into detail about it. So all these laws have been formulated to protect the consumer. So if you don't, if you're not aware of that, say Merrick Bank is calling you or any other of these banks, these ones that have, you know, that use unethical tactics, you know, or debt collectors, they're calling you and you, you don't know what to do about it. You think that you have to put up with it or something. I don't know. I know a lot of people out there, you know, while I'm saying this, I'm sure Somebody out there is getting some harassing phone calls. You may not realize it's harassing. You may think they're allowed to do it because you owe the money. If you can't pay, you can't pay, whatever the situation is. But when they're calling you like that, you figure, what can I do? You could send a cease and desist letter. Make sure you send it to the right department of the bank and let them know not to contact you anymore. You know, based on the laws, you know. Cease and desist all communication with me, you know. You're exercising your right under the Federal Debt Collection Pro Practices Act. So, and you can put that. You don't have to put too much. Make sure you sign it, date it, put all the information at the top there, account number and all, and send a certified mail return receipt. Now, once they get that, they're supposed to stop calling you. Creditors don't have to honor that. Because that's another thing. Because I've done all this so I know. You know what I'm saying. They call that letter. I, I said cease and desist. They call it a drop dead letter. I don't even like that term. Meaning they can't do nothing. At that point. You still owe the money. There's a reason I want to stop those calls. Because it is harassing. You know annoying. It's not supposed to be. I understand that you owe money. That they're trying to collect it. Okay you know. Send to a collection agency, or maybe in their their bank they may have a department for that, you know. But regardless, to keep doing that and keep calling you like that, it's like, in, and yet, they don't have a human being calling you. It's a, like I say, a robot. That's why I've been doing this. That's why I came up with this. They're using, that's where the robo, ro robo call comes from. Robot. That's where it comes from. Actually, a robot's dialing those calls because a human being is not dialing those calls. But you know yourself, all this computer stuff, it's got to be programmed, you know, by somebody, you know. And then after that, the computer can carry out all the tasks, you know. So that's what they've been doing, you know. But they set up these calls like it is. I mean, it's supposed to be random. It may be random who they call you, but I think the times might be kind of set. Because I notice when I get calls, I write it all down, and I know it. By looking at it, it's not random, necessarily. It is and it isn't, you know. Depends the setting they have for you, you know. It may vary from call to call, you know. So back to this again with this Merrick Bank. We've been getting along fine. I've been paying the bills for the last eight years on time, all our bills. Marie's credit was a little bit better than mine. So... Gets a, we get the mail, and I give it to her, and it's a pre-approved for Mary Bank for double the credit line. Because right away, she's excited. She's telling me, oh, ah, I can't believe it. Oh, that's nice. I can order some things. I say, good, Marie, no problem. Let me look it over. I explain it to her. That, you know, this is, you know, we got to make seven payments. And then, from that point on, we'll get another $600. Oh, she was happy about it, so... Uh, you know, I don't want to keep repeating the same thing there. So this, the time passes. I make all the payments as usual. I'm transferring some of the, you know, the cards that we, other cards we had, like store cards and all. And, because they don't have the balance transfer. See, this, this, they don't have that. It's no frills. They don't have all that. 
you know, no cash back or none of that. So the main thing was getting that credit, you know. So I paid it, then all of a sudden, seven months, I said, Marie, the money went in, six more hundred. Oh, good, now I can order a few more things. I said, it's fine, you can do it. Because I made sure during the seven months that it didn't go over the limit or nothing. I sent some extra money sometime. Just so that to keep the account in good standing, you know. I kept paying it. And, you know, the way it's set up, I didn't want to take a chance of being late. Because the late fee is $39. So I used to pay over the phone. So I'm using the phone to call them to pay the bill. They're using the phone to call call us to harass about paying the bill. So I used to pay over the phone and I'd be on time. So say the bill's due on the 15th of the month and you send a check, right? And they got it on the 16th. Maybe they held the checks. I don't know. You know, unethical again. So now you got a late fee, but yet your payment was in before the closing date. Might have been the 22nd. So years ago, it used to be if the closing date was the 22nd, you got your payment in before the 22nd, even though the due date was the 15th. You still didn't get a late fee. But here they go again, trying to circumvent the system, you know, by doing that. They all do it. So, so to avoid the late fees, I was paying them by phone. So everything was going good for a while. We start getting sick. I said, oh no. He's, you know, we've been sick, but we're staying home. We're staying out of the hospital. So I had to, you know, get her into the hospital. Because I don't want to take a chance here. I couldn't, I know I couldn't do nothing, you know. So the, all the tests and all, it was, it was really extensive. It took a, a lot. And they contacted me. I was going there too. Talked to the doctor and he said she's going to need to go to a nursing home. He's just not able to, to get around that good. And then with all the, you know, he's got uh, dementia and Alzheimer's setting in. And she needs long-term care, you know. So she can, you know, get over that. I said, okay. So I found the one that was near, you know, near where we live. So I could go there. So she, the first, in the beginning, she wasn't too happy with it. She started getting used to it. I said, look, you're getting all this care, Marie. You know, be glad. Look at all the attention they give you here. So I talked to her about different things. Did you believe it? One of the things she asked me. Frank, are you still paying Merrick Bank? You know, I don't want to ruin my credit, you know. So she said, I, I pray here all the time about that. I said, what do you mean? I, she says, I pray to St. Peter. Maybe she knows she wasn't feeling too good. So I said, what do you tell him? She says, I tell St. Peter. He says, St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the Merrick Bank. I said, oh, that's pretty good, Marie. That's not bad. She said, yeah, because I want to keep up with them. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to ruin the account. Even with her mental state the way it was, that had such an impression, you know, getting that offer from Merrick Bank. That was one of the good things about it, you know. So I tell them, whatever you want, you know that. Tell me. But we still have plenty of credit, and I'll use it. So I said, bring the things she wanted. So everything was going all right. After the four months, he was actually not coughing much, no congestion, looking better, talking better. The fifth month, I noticed, started a little bit more coughing, a little bit. Not much, but it was gradual, you know. I'm telling these people there, they said, no, the doctor comes here, he examines her, the nurse and all that. She's being, you know, cared for, you know, you don't have to worry about it. So they said, if you want to worry about it. Talk to the social worker, and they can maybe make arrangements, and you can take her back home if you, and you do what you want. But here, have to be under our control, you know. I said okay. I didn't want to upset these people too much because they're already shorthanded, they're already neglectful, so I didn't want to get them to, you know, take it out on Marie, you know, anything that I might do. So I didn't. So okay. So I know this is getting worse. So I started to go, try to go a little more, you know. So I went like on a Thursday, a Saturday, a Monday, and I said, okay, she's about the same. The last day there I saw her, you know, when she was up and around, she had her lunch, I was there with her. She was eating okay. 
So a few, I let a few days go. They didn't call me or nothing. So I go there on the weekend because that's when it, usually they don't have as many people on. I go there around lunchtime and she's in the bed because usually she's up. I mean, they're not changing her or nothing. She's in the bed sleeping, you know, quiet though. And I talk to the roommate and she says she hasn't been awake for a couple of days and she's not eating. They bring the food, they take it back. She don't touch it or nothing. I said, I don't know. And I tried to see if I could, the food came. I said to the woman, can you help me get her up? Yeah, she did. And then, you know, sat her up, but she couldn't even open her eyes. She's like in a stupor, you know. I didn't know what was going on. So I tried to feed her a little bit. It didn't seem to do much good, you know. She went, you know, she could still respond enough. Like I put some applesauce, some mashed potatoes, something soft, you know. And I put it in her mouth and she tried to take it. She took it. A little bit of water to wash it down, but she kept like drifting off, you know. So I let her go, you know. And then finally, when I left there, I said, let me try a little bit more, you know. Try to massage her, and I was rubbing her feet. And she said, stop that, Frankie. So I knew she knew I was there, you know. I didn't know when I left there, as I told the people when I left. Oh, no, we're, we're keeping an eye on her. Don't worry. And, you know, I, I know that there was something wrong there that caused that, you know. I'm not sure, because I filed complaints with the Pennsylvania Department of Health, and they found deficiencies there, you know, some of the complaints I made, and I had lawyers and all working on it, but no, nothing came of it yet, so, you know, so I went home, you know, I was worried and all, you know, and then, I think it was around three o'clock in the morning, I get a call from the nurse, so when she came on duty, she found Marie unresponsive, I said, she was unresponsive when I was there 13 hours ago on the visit, but she said, I just came on, I don't know about that. And we tried to revive her with the, they called the 911 and all, but she passed away. Nothing we could do. I said, okay, you know, I was, I felt, when I, when I heard that, I felt so lost, so alone now. I have no family. I'm by myself now. So I didn't know what to do. You know, all them bills and everything. I really didn't care that much about it at the time. You know, I finally got to it, you know. Contact some of these people by mail, letters and all, and I start getting calls. From all the different ones, I was writing it down, but I, I was going through the motions, you know. So I looked up one of the banks online, and it came up this lawyer pop. You know how they have that pop up? It says if you're having a problem with harassing phone calls, just put your name here on the side and put a comment, and I'll I'll get back to you. As soon as I put about the calls and all, the lawyer called me right back. I said, man, I was surprised, you know. He said, don't worry, you know, I want to help you. I can help you, so I gave him all the information, all the banks, you know, everything. So, once he got a hold of everything, it seemed like the call stopped, you know. So, I was glad for that, and then everything was, you know, I was still paying Merrick Bank. See, this is where this Merrick Bank is coming into this, this whole scenario, you know, Merrick Bank. So, I kept paying them. So, I had enough as it was. I want to make sure all these other accounts was... You know, getting cleared off, and since I had a card and all, and the expiration on the account is, I think it's June 2023, so the account is, is definitely active. They didn't close it. I'm using it. So it's not like you say they closed the account or something. Uh-uh. So after that, okay, I kept paying. A few months passed. I can't pay anymore, because I just reached the point where I just don't have enough. I can't take a risk here. Of not being able to, you know, pay here because income was just cut in half, you know. And I got rid of all them bills. So far, I didn't pay Merrick Bank. Then I guess it was about a month or so later, the phone starts ringing. I said, wait a minute. Merrick Bank. It didn't surprise me because I figured, okay. They're calling for Marie because she's the card holder and they don't know she's deceased. So I said, okay, let me let it go a little bit. I'm writing them down. Then I noticed the cell phone both. It was more on the landline. So I kept track of it. After a couple of weeks, I said, I better come and get a hold of the lawyer right away. As soon as I said Mary Bank, he wouldn't have known unless I called him. And he said, oh, yeah, that's no problem. I, I'll take care of it. I explained the situation. They're calling me about her bill. And he knows she passed away from the other accounts, you know, that I had with him. The other cases... So he said, let me see about it. You know, don't worry, I'll, I'm going to file it 
you know, I'll file the litigation against them and I'll, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. You know, I filled in everything I'm supposed to. You know, send me the call log. You know the, the routine. See, with email, you can take care of this. He's in San Diego, but it didn't matter. I'm in Philadelphia. It makes no difference. These laws apply all over, so it doesn't matter. You know, it, so in this case, it don't really make a difference. So, okay. Send them all that. And then I noticed, the, you know, I guess in a couple of days, the cell phone call stopped. And a couple of days later, then the landline. And I said, okay, good. You know, I was all right now. He's working on it, so I didn't worry about it. I know it takes a few months from the other cases. You know, this doesn't happen right away. So he's, everything's quiet in here, just like it is now. And all of a sudden, a couple, well, I think it was a month and a half. Now the call started. January 2nd, 2020. It started. I saw Mary Bank. I said, oh, no. I know right away when they start. I couldn't believe that they were starting it again, you know. After all that, I couldn't believe it. But they started up again, you know, because litigation is in. I'm saying to myself, you mean that has nothing to do with it? And they still probably, I don't think they still knew Marie was deceased at that time. So the call started back and forth, and then no cell phone, though. Oh, no. They didn't call me on Sunday either. I let it go for like two to three weeks. I contacted the lawyer, and he, you know, real quick, he, he's busy, so he just said, I'll reach out to them, you know, because... He's got a case in with them, I mean, for that account. Why are they calling, you know? So he reached out, and then still the calls were coming. So I contacted him again. He said, look, we'll make them stop. And the calls did stop, you know? So again, I kept track of all those calls. It was over 80 calls, you know, in January of 2020. And I was doing, I'm doing all these, uh, videos then too you know I was doing it because they start calling me and I was really ticked off because they stopped and then they started up a month and a half later I really was upset over that so I'm getting harassed over this I know I'm an authorized user and I know I got litigation is that retaliation against me well I don't know I feel that way again like with these calls I know I was being harassed I definitely know it because the litigation and they're still calling so i know what violation that is the lawyer has to determine that you know what he's going to do is he going to use those calls in january as leverage to say look he had litigation in against you for those calls and then you're calling him again all those calls he may use that to maybe make them make a settlement you know or he might try to settle the one case and start another one because that's another well, it's another year and also more calls, you know. So, I don't know. That's up to the lawyer. Whatever he says, that's what I go by. He might ask me about something, but I'm going to let him, his discretion, you know. Just like now, he knows all about these videos I'm doing. This is the 13th one. Well, there's really more than that. The 13th one, since I started this Invisible Man gimmick, you know. Because I like doing it like this, you know. So, if he tells me to stop, I will. So back to these calls again. All those calls. I, I I couldn't believe it. You know, once it finally stopped, I said, okay, well, let's just stop, you know. So now it's all pending and all. And I, you know, I really got ticked off, though. When those calls started again. I mean, it's not like you say, I'm trying to beat them for the money or something. First of all, they're already beat for the money. Because this account is in Marie's name. And her name is different than mine, all the information. She's the card holder. I'm not. I'm not a joint card holder. I'm not a co-signer. And we're not even legally married. I'm just an authorized user. See, the authorized user in this case is giving me the ability to take legal action against them. But it's not giving them the ability to go after me for that account. And they did it. They did it. Can't, uh, they have it all set up. It's so diversified. You mean they can't tell there's two different names on the account? They, they can't figure that out? Just because it's in her name? You mean that that's not factored into it? That should have told them right there. That should have tipped them off. If they were really checking that. You know, have that figured into the equation, you know, when they're doing these calls. That if there's two different names on the account, 
they should try to contact it with a live person, you know, to see what's going on. Because if they would have called, I would have probably answered and I would have told them the situation. She passed away. She can't pay the account. I can't pay it. And we're not legally married or anything. And that account will have to be uncollectible. But they didn't do that. that if that would have happened, chances are they would have asked me for the death certificate. And I would have proved it. And it was, you know, and was being paid after she passed away too. So that doesn't make me responsible for the account. So I would have did that and all. And the calls probably would never have got started. And what that means is, well, I wouldn't be having a case against them. Or maybe another case against them. And I wouldn't have to withstand all them calls, you know. So that could have been all avoided if they wouldn't have this system where it's just call, 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 call with the robot, you know. It would be different. It would have been different. It could have avoided a lot of this. Now they got litigation. Now I'm doing all these videos. I probably wouldn't be doing it. Because I'm not a person to really do something like this. I put a lot of videos, you know, on YouTube. When Marie passed away as, as some way to to try to forget, you know. And it's hard to forget. And I did it on everything you could think of. I put varied interests, you know. But now I put one on once in a while. But most of the time, all I'm doing is all these videos about Merrick Bank and harassing phone calls. Because I want people to know about it. Because I know I cannot be the only one getting those calls from Merrick Bank or any bank. I cannot be. It's impossible. When they're making those calls every day, I'm sure there's hundreds of calls on, the, on there, maybe more. Because a robot can dial them, you know, one right after another. A human being wouldn't be able to dial the calls like that. You know, like a speed dial. Uh-uh. So I know I'm not the only one. I just think a lot of people withstand it thinking they can't do anything. And that's what happens. It slips through the cracks. And that's why they get away with it. So if more people like me were coming forward and getting these consumer advocate attorneys that are out there to help them, and the more litigation filed against them, then they would probably, these calls might may stop a little bit. But they, they figure they're going to have to go after them for it, you know. And they probably check their, their statistics and they see that for the whatever they have to pay out, it's a small amount compared to what they collect, you know, from it, from doing this. So it's a cost of doing business. I mean, I say that before, you know. But again, you don't have to put up with it. If you're getting it, you need legal help. You definitely need it. If you think you can handle it, well, I, I would say no. I tried it myself because I had a lot of experience with all these creditors, but it's a little bit different now. So I'll give you the lawyer that I use. You know, he's very good. I, I'm so happy I have him. I'm glad, you know, and I'd be in worse shape than I, I am if it wasn't for him. I'd probably be doing this now. His name is Paul Mankin, M-A-N-K-I-N. It's a toll-free number, 800-219-3577. Again, I'll repeat it for you so you can jot it down. 800-219-3577. I'm going to put his information in the description too, so. But he's very good. There's a lot of lawyers, but I know he's... He's really conscientious. He's really trying to do a good job. He's trying to help people. He he feels good about it. You know, I know that. He's got to. You know, when you're helping people like that. Now, I'll go over it one more time. He doesn't charge for his services. Consultation is free. He doesn't take any percentage of your, if he gets you any money. Don't think he can, because he can. I know he can, because he's done it for me. So, especially with Merrick Bank. Because that's one of the ones that he deals with. That he knows, he knows how to, to deal with them. He knows how, you know, what laws have been violated here. And he knows how to prove it. See, in my case, they're calling me about somebody else's bill. And that's what it's coming down to. I mean, if she was still alive, that's one thing. But she's deceased. So it is somebody else's bill. It doesn't matter what we, we were together over 40 years and living as man and wife. It has nothing to do with it in this case. What has to do with it is that they're calling me about somebody else's bill. So back to the lawyer. 
You don't have to worry. There's no, like I said, no fees or nothing. And if, you know, if there's a case, you know, say there is a case and you win, the bank has to pay him and the court costs. And they have to pay pay you too if, if you have a, you know any money due to you for the violation of the laws. But he doesn't take a percentage or nothing of all that. It's a free consultation, so even if he doesn't take your case, hopefully that he'll take your case because he's that good. Or he can help you, you know, maybe give you good advice, so what you can do. But I think he'll try to help you any way he can, you know. Because he's not charging, so again, if he is the case that he puts in, you're not guaranteed to win, but if he doesn't win it, he doesn't get paid for that. You don't pay him, and he doesn't get paid from the banks for the court costs or none of that, so keep it in mind, you know. I'm doing all this for, you know, I figure I can help, help the consumer, you know. I'm a consumer, I know how it feels. And plus, I know uh, he's a good attorney. He's very good. See, the trouble with all the lawyers today, they don't specialize in that necessarily. He does. You know, it's one of the things. Anything with the consumer, he, he deals with. You know, if you're having any problems. But it won't, this one particularly more for anything with these debt co collection practices and all. Anything to do with that, that's one of the things that he, he deals with the most, I think. So he, he, this is good to keep it all in mind because I'm like, well, I'm doing all this. I'm spending my time and all. I don't mind. No, it's for a good cause. I give a lot of different spin-offs on it, you know, when I'm doing this. Because I've had credit for a long time, off and on. We're always having a problem, you know. What makes it bad this time, you know, I was paying for eight years and our credit was really getting better. I was trying to keep him working on it, you know. Now it doesn't matter. Because Marie's passed away, it doesn't matter about her credit. That passed away with her, you know. And my credit now don't matter because I'm in my 70s and I don't, I don't care about it now. Later on, I might, you know, look at it different, you know. Because all these accounts that I didn't pay that's in my name, well, they're going to be going to collection and everything else. But I know the statute of limitations is going to kick in. You know, Pennsylvania is four years. So after four years, they're legally forgiven. So my credit report, it may show that, but it's going to show not being paid. You know, it's only for seven years. So I know in seven years from now, if I'm still alive, well, I might decide to say, oh, well, that's all off of there. I'll get my re credit reports and look at them and say, you know, maybe I'll, I'll start with a credit. I don't really need it, though. Deep down, I'm glad that I don't have to any of that credit now. You can get credit. You know, you see uh, the cards that they have, but you're using your own money, you know. They advertise that a lot, that if you're working... You get this card and then you can get your pay, you know, your paycheck sooner and all. If you have a direct deposit or something, you know. I think they do charge a fee, some fees, but not much. It's nice to have it. I mean, I have a card now. I, I have credit. I know you're not going to believe it. I have credit cards that I just got. Two of them, matter of fact. Nothing to do with these banks. Credit is credit the way I look at it. I went for a clinical trial, and they paid me, but I didn't get the clinical trial. It was $150, and they put it on a, a MasterCard. Oh, I was glad to see it. I said, look at this. I got a MasterCard. It's also a debit card. I can use it. There's no fees. There's nothing. Then I went into another clinical trial, which I did qualify, and I got another debit card, credit card, MasterCard. And, it, and, it, and when you go there, they put the money on. A hundred, whatever it is, you know. How long the study is, you know. So I'm getting, I have actually got two MasterCards. They're different. They call them clean cards, you know. And I've used them. and get cash back. I don't get a statement unless I want it. So that means I'm not going to be, no finance charges. No late fees. No Merrick Bank. No harassing phone calls. So, I mentioned that before. I mention it again. Because just to show you that you can get credit. You know, without using your own money. I mean, I'm getting paid for doing something fine. All well and good. 
But if you needed money, and you you know credit sometimes helps you when you need money, you know to buy things. But when you like the idea of going for a clinical trial, you're helping yourself. You're helping somebody else. Look at that. And you're going to get paid. I like the idea they put it on a, a credit card. Because this, so one thing about that credit card, I noticed it. It's debit also. So when you go to buy something, they might ask for the PIN number. Which is good. So if someone got their card and they don't know the PIN number, they can't do nothing. So it's, it's, a, it's a good way. You know, I tie it into this because it is something to do with credit. It just so happens that happened, you know. So now I'm on this clinical trial for about, I think it's over six months. And then, well, they gave me a smartphone. I got to punch in every day a diary and all. And and then when I go for these appointments, I get like $100. One appointment, I got $350 just to go there to get tests and x-rays. And I got a, an injection in my knee and all that, $350. Right away on the car, I went home and I said, man. That's what I needed was something like that. But to have that money on a credit card, I have to pay every month. And if you don't pay, you saw what happened, right? I don't have to worry about that. I just wish I was getting more than that. But still, I'm glad I got it. You know, I'm doing something anyway. I mean, if, you, if you're working, maybe you can't do it. If I was working, I probably could do this clinical trial. Because I'm only going to go like maybe once a week or maybe once every few weeks. You know, because I'm keeping the diary, you know, on the smartphone. So that means I could still do other things. It's not tying me up that bad. So if you if you have some time, you know, and you have a job, maybe you could do it. If you need extra money. You know, if you're having a problem with these credit cards, I mean, you, you know, that's a good way to get a credit card without, you know, owing the money. At least you don't owe it. You kind of earned it. But it's not that difficult, you know. Not only that. All the tests. Well, I had MRI and everything. You know how expensive those tests are? I mean, I have coverage for it. Probably would have paid for it. I had stress tests. I have walk tests. I had EKGs. I had so many tests. You know, all the blood all the time. You know, urine tests. But the one I went to, they give $100 when you go, you know, to see if you qualify for the screening. If you don't, they still, they'll still pay you. But they only pay you, I think, if you have to have a clean urine. I went there and I had a dirty urine. Oh, no, I wasn't going to qualify. That's it. I wouldn't get I think they still give you 25 though. But the, another thing about it, they pick you up and they bring you back. Because where it is, I'd have a hard time getting there. I'm in Philadelphia. This is somewhere in Jersey. You know how Jersey, there's so many of those little towns and all. It's in the outskirts, you know. I know how far it is, you know. So get a... They call you the day before, and the next day the driver call you, tell you I'm outside, you go down, and pick you up, they take you, and they bring you back. And sometimes you'll get a ride back like in an Uber, you know. They'll tell you the car, you go outside, get picked up, and ride home. Other times, it may be a shared ride. You know, it all depends. I don't care about that. I'm in no, no rush and all just to go, but I'm just letting you know, discredit again. That made me feel a lot better because I say I got this credit now, and there's no strings attached or nothing. It is credit, no matter how you look at it. It's nice knowing that, you know. They have to put up with the tactics like what Merrick Bank uses, you know. They're calling you and all. You can't pay the bill. You owe them the money. In this case, you see what can happen. I mentioned it before. I mentioned it again. If anybody's interested, all you have to do, just look up clinical trials on the computer. And boy, so many different ones, and all over. Like the one I'm in, is in 20 locations across the United States. I don't know how, I forget how many, I think there's, it's like 200 volunteers. So I guess it's divided up. My location where I go, there may be 40. Another one might be 10, who knows. I guess they compile the information all together, you know, for the study. So chances are, wherever you live, you're going to find, you're going to find one. You gotta qualify, that's the whole thing. I'm looking for them all the time. Like where I go, they got plenty of them. I may not qualify though. They told me I can, you know, I can quit it anytime I want. You know, I don't have to stay on it. You know, it's up to me. No problem, no questions asked or nothing. So if I find another one and they're paying a lot of money, <laughs> I might I might stop this one. 
Because they have it there too. If I stick it out, they tell me they could get me another one. Because they have, this is outpatient that I have. They have inpatient. Inpatient, you could be getting $300 a day for maybe three weeks. I've talked to people that done it. You have to stay there though. That's a lot of money. And they put it on the card, of course. If you leave sooner, they're still going to pay you by the day. If you need to make some money, you could look into it, you know. That way, you don't say, I'm getting a loan and, you know, a credit card and trying to get some money to pay bills or, you know, get something you need. But, you know, because I get that advertisement all the time on the computer, you know. Loans, 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 so much of it, you know, credit cards and all. I don't want to do any of that. I know what it is. I charge high interest rates, and if you don't pay, you know what's going to happen. The harassing calls. So I threw that in because I'm trying to help people. So I mentioned it. I mentioned it, you know, I mentioned it before too. But I want to go into it a little bit more now, you know, since I went over this. So back to this, all these calls again. Are you going to like it if they start calling you for a payment? I mean, it, it bothered me a lot. It just ticked me off. See, to prove the point, I'm doing this, right? The fact I'm doing this proves it, that I was annoyed. That's part of it. I mean, I'm sending the attorney I have. I don't know if he's, you know, too happy with it. All these videos I've been making, I'm sharing it with him. Because I figure maybe he'll look them over. Maybe he'll take something out of it. Maybe he might tell this bank, well, you know, this guy definitely, you harassed him and you ticked him off and I got proof of it. When they hear video, you know, a lot of times that might encourage them to make a settlement, you know, because they know you bring something like that to court. And me with this disguise and everything that I've been wearing and all the things that I say about, you know, what they did with those calls and late fees and everything else. And plus, if it's somebody else's name too, you know. Like I said, I know all the credit cards in the world couldn't bring Marie back, so that's my biggest concern, you know. I lost somebody, you know, that I can't replace. So, but at least I can do this, you know. I can try to help people. And I just wish somebody out there I could help somebody. And I'm trying with the lawyer because I appreciate him so much I can't pay him, you know. I wish I could. So I'm trying to pay him by doing this. You know, by endorsing him and doing these testimonials, you know. Hopefully he gets a lot of people to contact him, you know. Especially if it's Merrick Bank. Because if it's Merrick Bank, I'm sure he's going to take you as a client. I mean, he's going to take other banks too that do that. I know other banks that I had that he did deal with them, you know. So maybe this will help somebody out there. You know, I've done enough of these videos right now. Like I said, I don't know if I'm, how much I'm going to keep doing here. But I'm going to keep doing it as much as I can as I think about it, you know. I covered a lot of things, you know, different things. I go on tangents. I, you know, I allude to things. Because I think in one of them I mentioned about invisible and transparent. And, you know, I, I know I'm transparent. Even though now you can't see me now. You can't see through this. But I am transparent, because I have nothing to hide. I never did. Now, does Merrick Bank have something to hide? I say they're not transparent. Because if they're using unethical tactics, they're not transparent. And they are doing it. Because this lawyer that I have, he's trying to make them accountable for what they do. That's what you have to do. But they just don't care. You know, they think they can get away with it where they have power, because you owe them money. They're, they think they're above the law? Well, maybe there'll be some congressional hearings about this soon, you know? Not that all that impeachment stuff is over with, you know? For now, so. All that time could have been, in, you know, used for something else, you know? And this is one thing that's still going on. With these creditors and debt collectors is these calls, you know? They're trying to collect from me a bill that's not in my name. I mean, okay, you might say, well, they don't know that. They're trying to collect it that what's owed to them. But once they find that out, that that bill is not in my name, and I'm the one got harassed for it, because if Maria is not here and she's deceased, now who who got harassed for it? You can say, well, you said you did, but it's not in your name. 
I can prove it, first of all, because I wrote all the calls down. If I didn't get the calls, I couldn't have wrote them down, you know? And plus, the phone numbers are my name. So I'm going to see what they're going to, what their defense is going to be. I, mean, I have the attorney for that. I don't have to worry about it. But, you know, I'm just going to see what they're going to do. And all they'll do is probably have to make a settlement. They can't, I don't think they can carry it too much. Because you can just say, when I go to court, take them to court. That's all. Have a jury trial. Well, you know, this is back to this again, you know, with this account, you know. That's why I'm upset over it, you know. Because it is, you know, okay, if she's the card holder and she passed away, that's supposed to be uncollectible. Since we're not legally married, they can't go after me. We don't have an estate or anything. So it's uncollectible. Now, if they're trying to collect it, it's a zombie debt. Even though she's deceased, even if she wasn't, these scavenger debt collectors, they buy these debts in bundles for pennies on the dollar. And if they're uncollected, and they or, or say they're past the statute of limitations, or the cardholder's deceased, they don't care. They still try to collect it, so it's a zombie debt, because they're bringing it back to life. Making it like it's just a new debt, you know? I've mentioned this all the time, because I, I understand it, you know? Maybe people don't realize that. Debt collection is a big business now. Because more and more people have problems, you know. More and more people are getting into debt and they can't get out of it. Well, there's also other ways you can do this. There's debt consolidation. There's bankruptcy. There's a lot of things that, you know, you might avail yourself of depending on your situation. Because I know that with this attorney that I have, you really have nothing to lose. Everything to gain. But you have someone in your corner, you know, and he fights for the consumer, you know. And you couldn't pay and get any better service than that, no matter what you would pay. Because there's lawyers that do charge, that are not consumer advocates. They might charge you. They may only charge you if they get some money, you know. And then they take their money off and then you get the rest or however it's done, you know. There's a lot of different ways. But again... Attorney I have, I can't speak any more highly than him that I do. I'll never forget him for helping me. And that's why I'm doing all this. Hopefully, you know, I can help you out there. I appreciate, you know, you taking the time, you know, to even look at this video, you know. You're looking at a the invisible man. You like my disguise? It's not too bad. It's easy to do. Marie made me this. This mask, she, she knitted it and all. Because she could sew, she was a seamstress and all that. She cut out the high. She wanted me to wear it, you know, when I was shoveling snow and all. This is like 20 years ago. And I used to wear it, but I told her, she, you know, I would leave the house. She said, Frankie, aren't you going to put on the mask that I made for you? I said, no. It's gonna, I might walk by a bank and I might think I'm going to rob a bank. She started laughing. She said, yeah, I guess so. It looks like it, you know. If I robbed a bank with this, what are they going to say? Invisible man, bank robber? So I told her that, and I used to go, and I went to the job. And I would wear it, and then I noticed, because I had video surveillance, you know, outside the store. And I was shoveling snow and all. You know, because it's infrared, and it made it look, you know, lighter looking like, you know. So I was looking at the videotapes, I said, you know, it looks like the invisible man. And I actually posted on... On YouTube, you know, me shoveling the snow with this mask on. It's on there. If you look up my name, Frank Leeper, you know, on YouTube, you'll probably see it, you know, the videos. They'll be mixed in with other ones, but they're in there, so I have a lot of them. I was doing that, all that stuff, before I start doing this, but right now I'm doing this. Because I think this is important right now. Of course, there's a settlement in the case and all. I'll probably do another video to say what happened and what you can do. And what was the outcome of it, you know? Because, you know, I know people out there, probably not, not too many people are going to get called from a bank for a bill they don't know. It does happen, though. See, in this case, you know, we, we were together, you know, like man and wife for all these years. But they're still calling me about somebody else's bill. And the fact that she's deceased probably makes it even more effective, you know? That that's up to them. They should have known that when they, before they start calling they shouldn't have just be calling like that. I mean, there's some way they need to 
get a human person to make those calls. They got to set the computer up that once it's late, maybe the first month or so, have someone try to contact you before they start the harassing calls with the computer. And maybe that way, well, they could avoid this. I think I mentioned this before. So, again, it's those calls. I'll go back over a little bit more with the calls. Because I know there's all different formulas, you know, they use. And they called me in, in 2019 on both lines, right? They called on Sunday every day. It didn't matter. And with the same numbers, you know, they use different numbers every day. Okay, so I noticed one day, because I, I just went over it again, you know. Because I had it separated by, like I said, by a different phone number. I didn't realize it. That one day was seven calls. Five on the landline and two on the cell. Now, what is that? What does that do? That's not harassment. Both numbers. Forget about the the auto dollar. Forget about that. How about the calls that are annoying you, you know, on two phones? I use both phones all the time, you know. So I'm getting calls, you know. I was getting calls from the hospital, the bank, all kind of calls. Social security, all a lot of calls, and with that coming in there, because they don't leave it any message. I had the answer machine on because I figured, well, if I don't have it on, is it going to keep ringing, ringing, ringing? So to cut it down, the ringing. So I had the answer machine. They don't leave a message. No. Nope. Mm-mm. You pick. I try to pick it up because when it first rang, figuring, well, let me tell these people, you know, what do they want and why are they keeping calling? But they don't let you tell them. They don't. They don't want you to. They don't want you to contact them that way. Because if you make contact with them, if you pick it up and talk to one of them people, they're not supposed to call you for seven days after that. So they don't want to stop that. They don't want to stop that harassment. So that's why they have it like that. There's a reason for it. I mean, their reasons and my reasons and my allegations and everything, what counts is the law. And that's where the attorney comes in. He knows the letter of the law. And that's why you need to have him, you know. I'm going to give you his name again. So in case you don't want to go through the description, you could actually, well, you could read the description while I'm talking since I'm talking quite a while again, you know. Okay, his name is Paul Mankin, P-A-M-A-N-K-I-N. That's 800-219-3577. That's 800-219-3577. So give him a call, like I said, you know. Nothing to lose, you know. And if you don't think you have a problem, maybe you do. Or maybe you know you're going to have trouble paying, you know. So if an attorney w would contact any of these companies, they're not supposed to, they're supposed to stop calling you. Unless he tells them it's all right. You know, he contacts you and say, it's all right. But the thing is, I think the calls is the main thing. Well, I know I don't like it. And if I don't like it, chances are other people don't like it. And they know that. You know, it's a way to handle a lot of accounts, you know, by doing that. So if you contact them, fine. I did it already. In January, towards the end there, before the call stopped, I decided, you know, all them numbers that they use, they all go to the call center. So I call one of them. And what do you think? A recording comes on. Another robot. Your call is being recorded for quality insurance, and the next representative will be with you shortly. So let you know, I could have hung up and said, oh, I don't want to be recorded. I want to be recorded. Because I have a lot to say, you know. So, okay. The woman picks it up. What well, can I help you? I need your account number. And I said, I'm letting you know that this call is being recorded for quality assurance. She says, I don't agree. I said, well, okay. And then she said, well, give me the information. I gave it to her and all. And I told her. The re passed away. And I'm the authorized user because she said, who are you? And I, you know, I can't pay the bill and all. She said, wait a minute, I put, put me on hold. But she doesn't know what to do. Not used to getting anybody that's telling them something, you know. Okay, so she comes back. Not too long, put that funny music on. And she tells me, look, we need a copy of the, the death certificate. I said, okay, I have it. You, we, you can, I can give you the email. Maybe you could do it that way or... 
or you can you know send it to us by regular mail I'll give you the address I said no I'm not I'm not sending it I have to check with my lawyer I have an account pending with you you don't know that oh, I don't know about that I said okay well I'm not sending it and if my lawyer okays it I will I'll do whatever he says you know because since I'm an attorney I'm not going to do what what I think you know what they say they they might mess everything up I might mess the case up I don't know so we talked and I, I went and told her I said look is there anything else I said yeah now I told you that Marie passed away you didn't give me any condolences you didn't say I'm sorry for your loss you didn't say you know, well what Merrick Bank you, you're sorry for their loss loss of money but not worrying about loss of a loved one well this woman is you know indignant you know he said, oh, well, Mary Bad doesn't care about the money. I said, well, then why are they calling me so much? And she says, anything else? I said, no, I had enough. Goodbye, and that was it, you know, but I recorded it, just like I'm recording now. So if you happen to make a contact with one of these people, you can let them know that you're recording it. So if something comes up about that later on, <laughs> I, I let them know. So I said, I mentioned all these things that you can do. The whole purpose of it is that you're able to defend yourself, you know, your rights. Because if, well, if it wasn't for lawyers like I have, I don't know what I'd do. I've taken care of this through the years myself, different ways, you know. But this one was unusual. This is the first time this ever really happened like that. Because the first time uh, I have a loved one pass away too, you know. And, you know, with all that, you know, I'm suffering from emotional distress economic hardship all this stuff you know but actually me doing these videos kind of you know it helps me you know relieve that pressure a little bit i'm letting it out like you know it's like open up a valve and let all that out you know so i'm glad to do it you know i feel better about it and you remember all these videos i make you know everybody sees them every day different people some of the same people might see them but i know every day if it's a different video and I get views no matter how many I know people did view it and maybe they'll you know contact me about it and if anything I can can do I will you know if you just want to ask some questions and I could help because I have a lot of experience with it a lot over 20 years ago I got in trouble for credit cards a lot of trouble because we were starting to get credit and I and I got a compulsive you know and I want to get all the credit. I kept getting it, getting it. I had over 80 credit cards. Over $200,000 in credit. But I got in trouble for it. I guess one of the banks that shows you how banks again, they're sending pre-approved out. It's in somebody's name. And I put and put, you know, say it was in a woman's name. Say Jane Doe. And I put my name next to it. You know how women change their names. I put my last name and right away it went through. It was $5,000. It went through. I got a gold card. I put my name on it, and I was the authorized user. And I got the card. I said, well, they want to give it. Put my name, information, and phone number was mine. It wasn't false information. It was false information, but it was the true information that I got in trouble for. I don't want to go into that too much detail. But I got in a lot of trouble for that. I was railroaded to prison and all over that, over credit cards. Marie wrote a book about it. She wrote three books. One of them was railroaded to prison. It's on YouTube. The three books. I'll give you the titles. You can look them up. Book one was Real Diamond. Book two was Railroad to Prison. And book three was The Electronic Criminal. She did our memoirs and she divided into three books. So if you look up them titles, I did an audio book. Just like I'm talking now, but it doesn't have the characters. I'm just reading the story, you know, on the computer. If you want to hear the stories, they're on there. So that's what I said. All that stuff I was doing, but now I'm doing this. So that's what I say, by having social media, I'm able to get to people, you know. And I hope you people out there appreciate it, you know. But the idea is I know that all that's that's on there, on YouTube. I don't know how long it lasts, but it looks like it'll stay on there unless I delete it or they delete it for the content or something, you know. If they don't delete it for the content when I first put it on there, they're not going to delete it now. If somebody really complains about it. But I see, if you look up, you probably notice it on YouTube. Three years, five years, 11 years. There's all kind of 
They'll sell in there for years. You might look at it and say, wow, it sounds like it's more recent than that. You know, it depends. You look up harassing phone calls. You know I'm going to be on there with all these videos. I probably got more videos on there than anybody does about these harassing phone calls. So, you know, you might want to do that, you know. You can look it up. You have a chance, you have time, you know, and all. I appreciate the fact. I wonder how many people really listen to this. I, I hope so, you know, because the whole idea behind this is I can help somebody out there. It's just one person. Every time I do a video, this is the 13th that I've done with this Invisible Man gimmick. Well, if just one person would get something out of it, you know, I know it goes all over. It might bring the attention to these harassing phone calls again. Because, it, it you know, it's it's there. I know it's there, you know. A lot of people have problems and you just, you don't need those calls. Like again, I you know, I, I mentioned it before, you, you know, you still owe the money. You know, you don't... Just because you stop, they stop calling you. So you have to, you have to remember that, you know. Try not to make any deals with debt collectors because all they're trying to do is, you know, get money out of you. Remember, when a debt collector con contacts you, you know you owe. They, you know, know you owe the money, and they're going to try to make all kind of deals with you. Remember that you don't owe them the money, really. I'd rather deal with the, the creditor that I got the money from. If you know, think you think you can pay. Uh, all the stuff I discussed here. I'm going to put stuff in the description. I don't know exactly. I, I discuss so much stuff here. Sometimes I don't even know what to put in the description. I might just put in the description. View the video. But I usually don't. I try to do that. In case someone would read it. And maybe you don't want to view the video. Or listen to it all that time. You could run, run through the description. The main thing in the description is going to be about the attorney the consumer advocate attorney i'm going to have his contact information so you know that you can and plus mine too you know in case there's anything any question about anything okay i think i better i think that was pretty a lot this time again you know so i hope everybody enjoyed the presentation i hope i helped somebody out there and again like i always say have a great day